Hey, I'm Dan from MapTech, and today we're going to look at how to create a more production-focused underground diamond drill plan using the Create Drill Holes tool in Vulkan. In the last video, I showed how we can create a life of mine conceptual drill design, but this time we're going to focus on creating a more localized production plan and make use of the spec files we made in the first two videos to automatically adjust our collar positions to align with our drill rig setup constraints and adjust the setup of the holes at the collar in order to factor the expected deviation rates when applying deviation to our drill holes. So obviously in one of the previous videos we set up a specification file to store the parameters for our rig setup constraints in them. One more thing we need in order to allow that to work properly is we need individual surfaces that represent our face, the floor, the backs, and the left wall and the right wall. I can't just use a, a solid. So if you don't have access to the original survey strings to be able to create those surfaces, I'll give you a bit of a guide of how to do this in Vulcan Geology Core, which should be released sort of a bit later in the year. And this will just be as part of your geo modeler license as your geostat modeler license there. So we'll start off, I can load some Vulcan data I'll go and find the triangulation that I want. In this case, it's my drive solid. I can import that, and that gets imported into my surfaces container. So what I can do is I can select that. I can change it to a wireframe. I can make sure that I'm on my triangle or my facet selection mode, and I can use my freehand selection method here. So if I rotate around a little bit, I can literally just draw across and select all of the triangles above my floor. I can hit Control X on my keyboard. I can click on my surfaces container and Control V to paste. And you can see all of a sudden I've now got a floor. And if I remove my floor and then load up this new one, we've got everything except the floor. All right, so I can sort of rotate that a little bit. I'll do the same thing, but this time I will grab everything that is below my backs. So Control X. Then this one becomes my backs. I can remove that. Load this one up, and then we can go in and I can remove the face. Then I can select everything from the right wall there. Paste that, that becomes my right wall. And then what we've got loaded is a left wall. Then I can use my published Vulcan option. I can pick all of those, add them in here, and I can publish those back out to Vulcan to use. All right, so now that we're back in Vulcan and we've got our individual surfaces, you can see we've got a single collar point here. Now that that might have been created um, from a line input previously, where from a conceptual design, and now the you know the drive moved a little bit, or the design changed after I did the original design, and those might be my original target points, right? So we can go into geology, drill hole planning, create drill holes, and we will create a production spec. I'll call this a scenario. Um, now we're going to use the color and target methodology again. I'm going to use my survey intervals of 20 uh, and I'll just leave my setup optimization tolerances and my other planning constraints as the defaults like we did last time. I don't need to worry about my color spacing along line inputs this time. I just need to select my individual color, which is that green point there. And then I'm going to select my targets, which are grouped. So I'll pick those. I'll pick my naming. Uh, I can do a 
column then row, and then I'll use the digitize by three points option to pick my values there. And we'll define a base name. So in this case, I might use this as UDD, for example, it might be my underground diamond drill hole prefix. And then I can calculate my drill holes. You can see it's made our holes for us. All right. So in here we can use this adjust colors panel. So I could adjust just the Z value of a color if I wanted. So if I just wanted to raise them up, I could do it that way. Uh, I could use this manual input option, for example. So as we talked about last time, if I wanted to digitize some color and some target locations on the fly in the uh, drilling inputs panel here, I could go back later. If I didn't like the color position that it chose for a particular target, I could digitize a new color somewhere in here. And then I could apply that to a selection or apply to all, depending on how I wanted to do it. Uh, you can also use the translate option and you can pick it from and a two point and you can maintain the Z or not if you want to just shift them as you desire. But in this case, I'm going to use the rig setup specification file that we made earlier. So I'll pick my rig, my spec file and my scenario, pick my box triangulation, I'll pick my right wall. Pick my face, I'll pick my floor and my left wall. Now, the only other thing I need to do here is this direction. Now, when we set up the drill rig setup specification file, remember we talked about all of the azimuth values in that panel or in that spec file, work off the assumption that the face is essentially zero. So what we need to do here is digitize a direction so that we can back calculate or the tool can back calculate the relative north position. So I can just do as an indicate mode and do a from point and a two point towards the face. And then I can say apply to all. And you will see it's adjusted all of my collar positions to reflect all the setup constraints that we put in our specification file. Right, so whether it's going to be, in this case, obviously 14 meters from the face, it's done that. These ones have got to be in the face because of their azimuth and their dip values. Right, so it's done that all for me. So I don't have to go and I don't have to measure everything. It's already accounted for everything for me. Next thing we can do is if I wanted, I could change my survey intervals in this edit drill trace or the edit hole layout panel here. Obviously we can't change the hole layout if we're using one of our collar and hole out methods I could. In this case, we might want to apply some deviation. So I'm going to use the edit deviation option here, pick my spec file from the deviation calculation manager that we made, and then I can say apply to all. You can see it stores all of that in here. And if we have a look, you can see it's gone and it's applied deviation to each of those holes. Now, what we can do is if I right click on the column header up here and I say select columns, we have all these different attributes that we can display. So I might turn on the distance to target, for example, and we can see how close the drill hole gets to the target. So remember we talked about when we apply deviation, the way the tool works is that it will go and it will look up the expected deviation rate based on the dip and the azimuth at the collar, finds the appropriate deviation rate, and then it will test up and down using the set up optimization tolerance. So it'll test in half degree increments to see what the optimal value uh, for the dip and azimuth at the collar is to get as close to this target as it can get. So in this case, it's done it pretty well. But what you might find is that if the distance to target value is greater than say a meter, you might need to investigate the deviation rates in your original spec file. Now what we can do is you can click on the deviation rates panel and it will pull up and it will show you the deviation rate that it's applied. Now, the way that this tool works is that it tests essentially all scenarios of collar and azimuth dip values in half degree increments to find the optimal one. But what will happen is as it changes the dip or the azimuth, as it crosses over into new dip or azimuth bins, it will change the deviation rate that is being applied. 
Now, that means you kind of have to be aware of what the values in your deviation calculation manager spec file are. And this is why I said in that video, you need to kind of check and make sure that the values are reasonable. If you've got a, a big change in the azimuth or the dip deviation rates between bins that is unrealistic, that can sometimes mean that your distance to target value is going to be larger than you would expect because the deviation rate shifts. And so as it's testing those different rates and shifts between bins, it can't actually get it really close to the target. But what you can do is, like I said, you can go back and you can edit your spec file for the deviation calculation manager to make those more realistic. You can also, if you come in here and you manually change one of these rates, so if I change this, for example, to, I don't know, 0.02 and hit OK, it goes and you can see it's recalculated my distance to target. Now, if I change the rate manually in this panel, it will then hard code that deviation rate and it will then find the optimal distance to target using only that rate so it won't shift as it goes between uh, dipper azimuth values, right? In a similar way, if I would have used this uh, apply manual deviation rates, it will use just those values and it will pick the optimal collar dip and azimuth values using just those rates. Uh, again, I might want to extend my drill holes. Uh, let's say in this case, I might, want to extend, I might want to extend them by 10%, the total hole length. So it's going to do that for me. I could change all the hole colors if I wanted. So I could make them all light blue if I so choose. And now I can decide how I want to output my drill holes. Now, in this case, I might want to put them out to a layer. So I'll call this one So I might want to spit them out to CSV files this time. So this is going to create a you know, 008 underscore collar and a 008 underscore survey CSV files for me. I might want to also create a summary file. So in this case, I'll give it a name. We'll call it 008 uh, summary. And I can pick the fields that I want to include in my summary file. So I might want to have my whole ID the X, Y, Z of the collar. I'll just make this a bit bigger. I probably want my azimuth and my dip. And I probably want maybe my target domain, um, perhaps my target depth, perhaps my max depth. Uh, if you want, you could spit out the distance to target. You could spit out the estimated cost. So remember we looked last time at doing our conceptual design. I could create a summary file and I could spit out the estimated costs for using uh, for my budgeting or scheduling. Uh, if you're doing daughter holes, we can look at that later. Um, I don't need that one, so we'll get rid of that. And then if I want, I can spit these holes out to an existing drill hole database. So, so I'll add these to here and I can hit save. It's going to tell you if you're creating drill holes, this already exists. Do you want to overwrite the existing drill hole database or do I want to append it? So I'm going to append to my existing database in this case. Now that's all done, I can close my panel. So you can see it's saved the holes to my layer here. And if we open up our project directory, you can see it's made, for example, our summary file. Right, so it stores all those values uh, in that single summary file. So the whole point of this is that you can then just copy and paste that straight into your drill program template. You can have your target depth, your max depth, your ASEAN dip at the collar and all that sort of stuff. So you don't have to copy it out manually, it's already there. Uh, we've also got our collar CSV file and the survey CSV file. All right. So this is something that was brought into Vulkan, I guess, somewhat recently. So if you're unaware of it, we can go to the Analyze Label Advanced Object Label. And there's an option down here now where I can use this Segment Chainage option. So I can pick that. I'm going to turn off this Add Prefix. And then I can select OK. I might select by layer. Pick my production layer that I just made. 
And what it's going to do, it's going to label all the downhole depths for me based on my survey points. And it's going to give me my end of hole depth there. So that can be pretty handy. Well, that's about it for creating an underground diamond drill plan. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of it. And I'll catch up with you in the next video in the series. Cheers.